excuse me one second. The children were practicing for next Sunday and they left this there. I'm not going to stand up on it, amen? <laughs> but it was in my way. Bible turns me to Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. To all of those that are visiting with us, we, we greet you in the name of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we thank God. It's good to see Reverend Shawnee Johnson. Amen. 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 She's been sick. Amen. She's been singing all over the world. Amen. Amen. Blue Jay singing. Hallelujah. Get some tussing. Amen. Feel better. Amen. Amen. Good to see Sister Amanita Thomas. Amen. 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 All the way from North Carolina. Amen. Amen. I saw somebody walking over. I said, who's that? Amen. Amen. You know, Sister Thomas. Good to, good to see you. Good to see you. Acts chapter 3. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Before we read the scriptures, see, I don't know if you're like me, but you got to say it when you think about it or you might get it. Amen. 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 So I need some volunteers. And what do we need volunteers to? Everybody nervous. Look at y'all nervous. Everybody nervous. No, I need some volunteers. The Lord has been speaking to me. I've been praying a lot. And I don't mind telling you this. You know, sometimes it's hard to pray. When folks got you going places and you got to prepare and you don't have time to pray. So I've been struggling with that. So I said over the last few weeks, I said, you know what? I'm going to set some blocks of time for myself just to sit with the Lord. And the Lord told me, he said, there's going to be some more babies in this church. Amen. Now you say, everybody nervous. Amen. <laughs> Y'all going, going to buy all the stuff at Rite Aid. <laughs> I say that to say this. <laughs> oh, I'm not even going to get into stories of what happens when I go to the Rite Aid, right? <laughs> Don't let Erica say she thinks she's pregnant. I buy the whole row. And I never buy the one that got the plus and the minus. Oh, I want pregnant, not pregnant. Amen? <laughs> I don't want to try to figure out is there a cross? Is it, I, no. I need words. Pregnant, not pregnant. But I say that to say this. We're going we're gonna to continue and we're going to kind of revamp and, and, and uh, prepare our nursery in the back. Now what happens? I need, we need volunteers to be in the nursery. Okay? So what does that mean? That means that if you're willing to be with a group of children, you know, babies up until, we'll call it two, three, something like that, I don't know all the particulars, but I know I'm not going back there, amen? Because <laughs> the Lord has gifted some of you all, amen? Has gifted, we wanna, and we're going to invest in it too. One of the things I, that gets me about churches is that the nursery is always kind of just up, uh, right? Mm -hmm. You want you want fresh paint, right? You want folks to feel good when they dropping off babies, amen? amen? That they will be cared for, comforted, and blessed. And so I say all that to say, if you are willing, forgive your name to the birthday girl, amen? Come on, <laughs> amen. In the office, and then we'll be in contact with you now. Let me know. You gotta have the right spirit for it, number one. <laughs> right? You gotta have the right spirit for it. Because uh, babies cry, amen? amen. I'll tell one more story. I went to see Sister Phyllis the other day. Uh, Sister Phyllis and Brother Hodges, and and here I am, I'm feeling good, you know. I drove, drove over to the house and parked the car, you know, pulled the silver bullet in, you know, right there. And um and the door was open, so I'm like, yeah, let me, let me see if I can surprise them. So I knock on the door all hard. And didn't I know, wasn't, um, Lord. Autumn. 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 I'll get it, baby girl. <laughs> uh, she was watching Autumn, amen, the youngest, the youngest Bradshaw daughter. I woke her up, she crying and going oh. on. I felt awful. And you, and you just know, Sister Phyllis, she gave me the look of death. <laughs> <laughs> Here I am, the pastor bringing good cheer, waking up babies, amen. 
But uh, the Lord shared that with me. Now, I don't know who's pregnant, who's not, who's adopting, who's not. I don't know. <laughs> but I do know that we want to be ready. Amen? Amen. We want to be ready to receive them. So if you're willing, um, give your name to the church office. Acts chapter 3. Now, Peter and John were going up to the temple at the ninth hour, the hour of prayer. And a man who had been lame from his mother's womb was being carried along whom they used to sit down every day at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, in order to beg alms of those who were entering the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he began asking to receive alms. But Peter, along with John, fixed his gaze on him and said, look at us. And he began to give them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. But Peter said, I do not possess silver and gold, but what I do have. What I do have, I give to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, walk. And seizing him by the right hand, he raised him up, and immediately his feet and his ankles were strengthened. With a leap, he stood upright and began to walk, and he entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God, and, and they were taking note of him as being the one who used to sit at the beautiful gate of the temple to beg alms. Yeah. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Thus ends the reading of our text this morning. For the next few moments, friends, I will share with you from the subject, what I do have. What I do have. Amen. Time and time again, as I go here and there, as I travel the highways and the byways, walking or driving the car, or even if I'm on public transportation, I run into different people, both men and women. And without question, as soon as they find out what it is I do, that I'm a pastor, that's the work that I engage in, that's the calling on my life, they begin to tell me what all of the things that they don't have, <laughs> all of the things they wish they had, all of the disappointments that they had. I am not complaining, hear me and hear me well, church, but I began to think about that over these last several weeks, over these last several months, began to think about this theology of lacking. Mm -hmm. The understanding that says we already believe that we don't have because we focus in those areas that say, I am lacking of these things. Mm -hmm. Yet I rarely, 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 Find those who are so focused and tuned in and locked in on what it is they do have. Amen. That they are failing to understand and failing to see the blessings of God all around their lives. Amen. Because the culture is telling us, the culture is talking to us, the culture is showing us that you ought to want this. You ought to want that. And you should think of yourself as less than because you don't have what they want you to have. But what they don't tell you in the music videos is that they don't own it either. Amen. What they don't tell you on the television screen is that they don't have the deed either. They are renting it for five hours to make you think that you're less than. Instead of thinking about who you are what God has blessed you with yeah, and who yeah. he has blessed you to be. Amen. The text is very clear. We go into Acts chapter 3 and Acts chapter 2 ended on a high note. For you see, this chapter is moving faster and faster, moment after moment. The Holy Spirit came and breathed on the whole room. Yes. And we recall, and I talked about it last week, about what happened when the Spirit came. People began to speak in languages that they never learned. And when you start praising the Lord in a way that folks aren't too comfortable with, Jesus. When you start praising the Lord a little too loud or a little too long, I don't know if anyone knows what I'm talking about. When you begin to praise the Lord, when they often think you need to be quiet, folks will start questioning you as to what is actually going on. Oh, that's what happened on the day of Pentecost. The Spirit came and they started praising the Lord and the haters in the back looked at them 
and said, I don't know what's wrong with them. They must be drunk. I don't know if both drinking anymore. They must have had too much old English. Or St. Ives. See everybody looking down, y'all drinking it still. See, the reality said, they looked at them in the text and said, what is wrong with them? And that happens even today. I told you the story last week when I was at the red light praising the Lord, talking about this isn't any ordinary worship, and the folks next to me started looking at me like I was crazy. Because when you get to praising God, Folks will look at you strange. They ask questions of what was happening, and Peter had the gumption to stand up and to speak back to the people. What you see, these folks are not drunk. They have just received what the living God told them they would receive. Let me stop here for a second. Because some of y'all have been praying for some things for a long time. You've been looking to the Lord to fulfill a call for so long. And then when it gets here, Jesus. Uh, I told you last week that when the sling came off, there was a word that was coming from the Lord. When the blessing showed up in the prayer, God answered. You began to praise the Lord like your word, church mouth. You've been praying for six months and one year and three years and when the answer showed up, you were embarrassed to lift your voice and to say, hallelujah, God. You've done it again. You didn't want folks to look at you strange. You didn't want your friends to stop calling you or to call you a holy roller. You sat on your praise because you were scared of what they think. Well, I'm glad in this 39 years I've been living that I've gotten to the point that I can care less whether it bothers you or makes you uncomfortable. Because I don't know what you came to do, but Sister Goldie and I came to praise the Lord. Oh, you remember when Goldie stood and sang her song. I'll tell everyone about it. So Sister Goldie got it the first time with no music, no backup. She said, I'm going solo. I don't know what you came to do. I came to pray to the Lord. Well, after Peter was preaching, and you saw last week that the church began to grow. And we began to see what are these things, these characteristics of this local church. First, that thing that we were able to see was that they enjoyed being with one another. Amen. 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 Lord, deliver us from saints that don't want to sit next to anybody else. Amen. Lord, deliver us from saints that never want to smile and say good morning. Amen. Lord, deliver us from saints that show up looking sad down in the dumps when God Almighty has woke them up this morning. God, deliver us from folks that when they sit next to you, you get to feeling bad and you were feeling good just a week ago. I tell you, the Lord, deliver us. Deliver. Deliver. They enjoy being with one another. See, I like being with y'all. Yes, yes. Otherwise, I might find a new job, but I enjoy it. <laughs> it's a blessing when you come into church and Brother Hodges tells you at 89, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Yes. It's a blessing to come to the church and the young men, the young boys run up and say, good morning, pastor. It's a blessing to be in the house of the Lord when you can smell the coffee fresh as soon as you come in. I tell you, they enjoy being with one another. Yes, yes. Matter of fact, let's practice. Look at somebody and say, it's good to see you. Find one more person say, I'm glad I'm sitting next to you. Now let's try that one more time because some of y'all said it and didn't smile at all. I didn't believe it. You weren't believable. It was hard to believe that. I'm glad to be sitting next to you. They enjoy being with one another. They enjoy eating with one another. And the law was adding to their number. These were the characteristics. The church is on a high. And Luke here in the book of Acts begins to tell us the most prominent example of the wonders that have been mentioned in chapter 2. For we recall in chapter 2 and verse 43 that it said everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. 
and many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. Luke told us that many miracles were taking place in this new church. And so Luke decides in chapter 3 to recount one of the most impactful miracles of the day. Notice in the text that Peter and John are walking to prayer. You must understand in the text that there are two times to pray. You had the morning prayers and you had the evening prayers. And so as they travel to the place of prayer, we look at the clock and it's about three o'clock. It's three o'clock on the dot. I'm in my drop top, right? <laughs> but they came moving into saying these prayers. And as they were walking to the temple to pray, they came face to face with someone who had a need. And notice that this wasn't just a, a, a local or a, a situation where it just happened. Notice what the text says. It says that a man who had been lame from his mother's womb. I couldn't use my arm for five weeks and I was crying myself a river and, and being down on myself and mad. This brother couldn't walk from the time he came out of his mother's womb. I tell you, when you look in comparison, you'll be able to see how blessed you really are. I'm not trying to minimize the situations that go on in our lives. I'm not trying to compare us to say you got it that much worse. But I tell you this, I've been pastoring long enough to know that when you look at our situations, those problems that we are bemoaning, if we just take a stroll down the hospital wall. If you just go with one person Ooh. to their dialysis treatment, yes. if you just find yourself to the homeless shelter, if you just go and see that yes. there are so many that find themselves at the doorstep of death, yes. and yet they find a way to get moving day after day, if you're really feeling bad, make your way down to Kensington and ask yourself where those addicts went when they cleared them out. Uh -huh. I tell you this is the truth in your house. Amen. It's amazing to me. I'm not saying that they should be able to stay and partake in that open air drug trade, but I tell you, we are hustling backwards when we don't have anywhere for them to go, but we just move. Yeah. I'm sorry, you maybe didn't come for that. But I've been climbing up a wall all week. Yeah. Yeah. Where are they going to go? That's true. Have we provided opportunity for them? No. Real quick, it turns out, well, they shouldn't be doing the drugs. Well, how many times could that have been the story of somebody else's life? Amen. They shouldn't have been creeping at night going to Amen. someone's house. It's not yeah. up in the white. How many times could that have been the story of uh, they shouldn't have been saying those words? They shouldn't have been late for the job. They shouldn't have been doing all these things. There's a whole line of shouldn't have. Sure. Amen. But I'm glad that God, we serve a God that understands this un understanding and concept of grace. Yes. I didn't deserve it, but I did it anyhow. Yeah. They began to walk to the place of prayer at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and they came across this man who hadn't been able to walk all this time. And it tells them that his friend sat him at the gate called Beautiful. Everyone say Beautiful. Beautiful. The gate called Beautiful. Beautiful, this understanding, the Nicocor gate, the, the main and largest gate that enters into the temple made of expensive bronze. The court of the women was on the east, and here this gate is facing the sanctuary, and you see it in your sanctified imaginations that this beautiful bronze gate that is right there at the front of the temple when the sun begins to rise and when the sun begins to set you see the radiant sunshine as it, it ricochets off of the gate. This is the beautiful gate that his friends put him in front of because he could not walk. Mm. The Jewish understanding of someone who is unable, unable to care for themselves speaks to the charity of others. The charity in Judaism, and I would even dare to say the charity here in the Christian life is one that says we ought to be glad to give. Amen. Yes. Oh, let me say it again lest we miss it. We ought to be glad yes. to give. Yes. Now you can only give what you can give, but when you give, be glad yes. that you have the opportunity yes. to give. Yes. Now the question 
is, well, pastor, what if I don't have enough, enough money to give? I tell you, one of the most valuable things in your life is your time. Amen. 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 How are we willing to give of our time, give of our talents, give of our resources, give of our prayers? Yes. Oftentimes, we're so preoccupied with our own situation that we can't offer up a prayer for somebody else. Amen. As I saw Brother Wayne Fogey come to the meeting yesterday, knowing that he was in pain and knowing that he hadn't been at church for a while because his hip had been bothering him. As I got in my car, his face was in front of my mind, and I began to pray right there as I traveled home. Lord, bless Brother Wayne as he keeps on trying to be the best man of God that he's called to be. And then to see him this morning ushering, preparing the people to come to the house of the Lord. How many times? With our prayer time. They found this man and he was in front of the gate called Beautiful and he was begging for alms because he needed to eat. And when he saw Peter and John, here is another opportunity for me to get some food in my belly, to get some shoes on my feet. To get some clothes on my back when I see Peter and John, because obviously they're holy people, because they're coming to the temple at three o'clock, the time of prayer. But as Peter and John saw him, look at what verse four says. It says he fixed they fixed their gaze on him and said, "Look at us. What do I have?" I want you to realize, saints, and this is the one thing, first thing I want you to take away with you today. Don't look away. Let me say that one more time. Don't look away. For when the opportunity comes for us to be a blessing to someone else, the human response is to duck and hide. But Peter and John said, I don't know what I have, but I tell you this, I'm not going to disregard you as if you are insignificant. It's like a man who got killed in Florida and the jury gave his family four dollars. One for each of his children and one to bury him with. You look at his life and they said you are insignificant. I say Peter and John looked at the man who hadn't walked for his whole life and he looked at them to honor his humanity. Yes. Saints, all too often folks are looking away. Yes. Thinking if we put our heads in the sand that somehow the situation will get better. Nope. I'll tell you this, I, the girls went to a sleepover on Friday. They went to a sleepover on Friday, and, and I was glad for the sleepover. Amen? <laughs> I was looking for them to sleep again. Amen? <laughs> and it began to think to myself about when I went to my first sleepover. And it was a group of boys, and we were all together at my friend's house. And, and you know how boys are. The first one to go to sleep gets the shaving cream on the face. And, and you know how those things work out. But I still remember this, as plain as day, Sister Jolie, we wanted to watch a movie. And so they put on Nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> now I know y'all watch Get Out and all the other movies and y'all got a little nervous, but you ain't seen nothing until you've seen Freddy. <laughs> And as I was looking at the video, and I, I didn't want to be a punk, you know how that is, when you were about nine or ten, but I was scared, I tell you. Freddy in your dreams, I stayed up all night, I ain't going to sleep. And when the most difficult parts of the movie began to play out, I remember myself that when it got hard, I looked away. I didn't want to see what was in front of me because if I saw it, I would have to deal with it. And so many times there are folks that have needs that are needing the blessing of the church and we are looking away and looking at things that don't even matter. Yes. Arguing about things that don't even matter when folks are needing life and life itself. Yes. 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 My brothers and sisters, in 2018, we can't look away. Yes. We can't turn a blind eye to folks being done down in the street. We can't turn away. When mothers can't feed their children and they're less than adequate education, we cannot turn away. For if we turn away, who will deal with the injustices of our day? 
Peter and John said, look at us. And you see right there, it had to be an amazing feat that this man who couldn't walk, who has always depended on the charity of others, finally someone looks at him and wants to see all of him. Yes, yes. As they begin to stand there, and they're having this exchange, and you're wondering what are the words that will be exchanged between Peter and John and the man. Peter says one of the greatest statements in all of the scriptures. Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give it to you freely. Silver and gold I do not have. But what I do have, I give it to you and I give it to you freely. Too many times we are fretting and hyperventilating and fearing this understanding about what we don't have to give. But how many times in the scriptures has Jesus told us, has the Holy Spirit revealed to us, has the Father uh, told us that we must give what we are able to give? Yes. Don't you remember the widow's might? That she didn't have a whole lot of money to give, but the money that she did have to give, she gave it and she gave it with joy. Yes. What do you have to give today, saints? Yes. There are far too many of us that are selling ourselves short. Ooh. Looking at these other folks as if they have all these other things that we don't have. Yes. Kim Kardashian is in the White House. How can she help my situation? <laughs> And folks say, I want to be like her. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I want to be like the other superstar. Maybe I want to be like the other person. Never mind what you don't have. Yes. Yes. Whatever you do have, give it and give it freely. Yes. Oh, let me sit here for a minute. Can I, Deacon Wilson? That's all right. Don't always charge everybody up for yes. your gift that you can give. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Yes. Because I tell you this, I'm glad that the church provides me with a paycheck every two weeks. I, I'm blessed by that. I got a wife and some children. But let me say this and say this very clearly. Even if I wasn't in a space that I was able to get paid for sharing this gospel of Jesus Christ, I have to believe that I would find myself on a corner somewhere saying what is the acceptable year of the Lord. Because when the Lord has gifted you with something, yeah. Yeah. everyone say gifts. Yeah. Oh, you know what it is. When you get a gift that you really like, you open it up fast. Yeah. I'm not talking about the gifts from the Christmas, uh, what's the thing called when you trade the gifts? Pollyanna. Pollyanna. Uh, now, I'm not talking about the gifts that you get at the Christmas Pollyanna, because y'all know what happened with those gifts. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Let me rework it for you. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm so excited. And as you unwrap the gift, you make sure that you don't tear the gift. Because when you get home, you got a closet for gifts that you're giving out. And I just tell on everybody, next time y'all have polyandry, y'all gonna be like, open it up, man. <laughs> Folks don't want to tear the box. I might have to rewrap this. Give this meat and cheese to my cousin. I'm talking about when you get a gift that you really like. And you get excited about it because you can't wait to rip into it. That is what God is inviting you to give in this time we live in. A gift that you are excited about. A gift that you can't wait to share. Oh, that's what the choir said. Holy Spirit, breathe on me. See, if you, when you're really excited about the gift, you can't wait to tell everybody else about the gift. When you're so excited, you say, I'm going to give it, and I'm not even going to charge you, because this man is about to get a gift better than any gift he's ever got. Have you ever noticed that some folks try to fill the void that exists when you don't know God with other earthly things? True. How can
can he say that this water I give you, when you drink from this, you will never thirst again. Oh, you know what it is to be thirsty. You drink one and then you drink another. That's why the old folks said make sure you drink water. Because if you're real thirsty and you drink soda, you're still thirsty. But if you, hallelujah. But when you're real thirsty and you drink some water, it quenches the thirst as only water can. How can Jesus tell us time and time again that the gifts that I'm giving aren't gifts that you want to open up real slow, but it's gifts that you want to get into real bad because the gift will change your life. Silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give you freely. In the name of Jesus the Nazarene, rise! Is it walk? Yes, yes. What do you have, saints? What do you have? Not what your brother has. Not what does your sister have. Not your friend or your mother or father. What do you have? And have you found the opportunity to give it? And to give it freely? Yes, there is a joy that comes when you are able to give and you know that it blesses someone's life. Amen. How many gifts do you give to the person that never says thank you? All right. Let me say that one more time. How many gifts do you give to the person that when you get it, they say, oh. <laughs> you make a little mental note. That's the last time I go to the Bible and dine with you. <laughs> Notice what happens in the text. The text says that after they gave freely what it was that they had to give, after they gave it over to him, they, he began, they seized his right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were strengthened. And notice his response to when his life changed. Mm -hmm. He began to leap and to upright and began to walk, and he walked all around because he wanted everybody to know that my life has been changed. Yes, yes. That I'm no longer the same. Yes. That I got a gift from two men that I do not know, but the gift that they gave me was a gift that would save me, and now I don't care who knows it, but I have been redeemed. Yes. I have been healed. I have been blessed. Yes. When you give what you have and you give it freely, yes. and it blesses someone's life mm -hmm. who really had a need, you will be able to see in the countenance of their face yes. that they are so thankful and joyful that you are willing to look at their humanity and give them exactly what you are able to give them and give it with joy. The singer now, William McDowell, what did he say? I give myself away. Yeah. Because he said, so Lord, you can use me. I don't know about you, but some of y'all been on the sidelines with God for far too long. And God is a gentleman, Jesus. He walks on the outside of the street. He opens doors when you come down. He pulls your chair out. God is a gentleman. He's never going to take you somewhere where you're not ready to go. And better yet, you're not willing to go. So you got to be able to say, Lord, I give myself away. So you can use me. See, when you invite God to use you, you got to let go of some things. But God may use you in a way that you never thought you would be used. Oh, that's why folks say, I never thought I'd be a deacon, but now I'm a deacon. God will use you in ways that you never thought he could use you. You say, I'm a deaconess, but I never thought I'd be a deaconess. God will use you in ways you never thought he could. You say, I can't sing that well, but I'm still on the choir. The Lord will use you. In ways that you never thought it could use you. You say, I don't go to prayer meeting. And then you end up at prayer meeting. God says, I can use you. In ways that you never thought I could use you. And just because you were willing. Is there somebody here that's willing to let God take you where God 
God wants you to go. Oh, I'm not going to use cliches and say God wants you to go to the next level. Watch out on the next level. Because when you get to the next level, it's more hellions trying to bring you down. I tell you the truth in it how. Make sure you're ready to go to the next level. Everybody wants to say it because they hear it on the radio. I want to go to the next level. I want to go to the next level. But let me tell you something. When you get to the next level, Satan is ready to pick on you a little bit more. But when you go to the next level, you got to be ready and armed and dangerous with what God has given you. And what did he give you? He gave you the name of Jesus. What I don't have, I can't worry about. But what I do have, I give it to you freely. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. I tell you this, give your passion to someone that has need of it. Give your gifts to somebody that has need of it. Give your time to somebody that has need of it. Give your abilities to someone who has need of it, your resources, your love, your patience, give it all. And what will happen, what will happen is that when you bless that person, when you bless that person and they have come face to face with the almighty living God, they'll start singing the songs that you didn't necessarily know why folks were singing the songs. Yes. But they're singing the songs because the Lord has changed their lives. Yes. See, when, when you give what you can give and you give it freely, yes. and you're able to give them what they need and that blesses their life, all of a sudden, Sister Jerry, you might hear it go like this. All hell, the power of Jesus' name. Oh, y'all don't know the song. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. They'll start singing the Lord will make a way somehow. But I tell you this, even though you're in the muck, oh Jesus. See, that's how you know folks really got need of it. When they start saying, I was stuck in the muck, in the miry clay, you know that's tough to get out of. But then the Lord will reach down and bless you over and over again. Church, I tell you, if you ask me for something that I don't have, I can't give it to you. But what I have, I give it to you freely. Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him, there is no other. Jesus is the way. If you ask me for something and I don't have it, I can't give it to you. But I tell you this, prayer changes things. I don't know what you're looking for from God today. But I tell you, if you ask me for something, so if you ask me right now, Pastor, you got $20. No, I don't. But I tell you this, I tell you what I do have. I have this, that Jesus is more than the world to me. There is no friend like the lovely Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. If you ask me for something and I don't have it, I can't give it to you because I don't have it. But if you ask me what I do have, amazing grace. How sweet the sound that saved the wretch like me. I once was lost in the angel, but now I'm found. Since the angel will be damned. That's what I'm talking about. I was blind, but now I see. And you ask me for what I don't have. I can't give it to you. But what I do have, I give it to you free. That there's a heaven to go to and a hell to miss. And there's only one way to get there. And that is by the blood of Jesus. What I don't have, I can't give it to you. But I can give you what I do have, blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. He's the heir of salvation. He's the purchase of God. Born of his spirit and washed in his blood. For this is my story. This is my song. And I'm going to praise my Savior. Oh, all the day long. Come on, y'all. Let's stand up and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I tell you this. If you're visiting with us or, or whatever the case may be, 
and you say, well, I wonder if that pastor can do X, Y, and Z. If I don't have it, I can't give it to you. But I do know a few things. Just a few things. I know that if you shall confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, yeah. and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the, with the heart man believes and results in righteousness, and with the mouth makes confession that results in salvation. If you ask me for what I don't have, I can't give it to you. But I do know a few things. That you are welcome to join here at the Christian Church in Philadelphia. And I only got one rule. We only have one rule. And that rule is that you got to believe on Jesus. We can work everything else out. But you got to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. If you ask me for what I don't have, I can't give it to you. But if you want what I do have, I say we can pray together. And I tell you, the Lord who sits high. And it looks low. Isn't that what they say? It looks high. It sits high and looks low. It said he will hear our prayer. We can agree together. What I do have. The doors of the church are open, y'all. I tell you this. Come to Jesus today. Come to Jesus today. That's right, Sister Belinda. Lord, I thank you. Isn't that it? That's it. Oh, yeah. I thank you. I thank you, Lord. I thank you. Hey, didn't y'all see that Greg Houston, he doesn't have that leg brace on anymore. What I, what I don't have, I can't give you. But what I do have, I give it to you freely. That by his stripes we have been healed. I tell you, it's the truth anyhow. Is there one today that wants to give their life to Jesus? You look like you're excited. You want to do something? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, you got to come on this side, my arm hurt. Come on. This side. Come on, me and Brent.